So the timing of it is just, is just perfect. And these commandments are refreshing. They're spiritual food. They are nourishment. They are the height of spirituality. Uh, these commandments are the, the basis for social renewal, and they are the guide to spiritual revival. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3, for this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. Have you ever thought about His commandments or love to us? And His commandments, praise the Lord, through Christ are not grievous, and they're good for us. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 29, oh, that there was such a heart in them uh, that they would fear me and keep my commandments always. Why? That it might be well with them, listen, and to their children forever. Somebody say forever. Amen. You see, there are good things for you when God is the only one. There are good things for you when no idols are in your life. There are good things for you when you take his name in praise and not in vain. There are good things for you, number four, when you honor him with your time and, time and remember the Sabbath day. There are good things for you uh, when you honor your parents and, and steward your family. There are good things for you when you recognize the source and the value of life. I said the source and the value of life. Thou shalt not kill. There are good things for you when you honor God with your bodies and with your marriages and, and your relationships. Uh, when it says thou shalt not commit adultery. How many of you want to be blessed and highly favored of God? Then here it is tonight. Keep his commandments. Amen. Would you stand with me as we go to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 15 for the eighth commandment as we talk tonight about three aspects of stealing. Exodus chapter 20 verse 15. Let's read it out loud together. Exodus 20 and verse 15. And by the way, we have choir practice next Sunday night at 5.30. And, and we'll have Christmas sing inspiration this year again. And uh, anyone is open to sing a Christmas song. So start letting me know uh, what you would like to do. And we'll give you the date for that as well. And you don't have to be a member of the church. Uh, you can be a guest and sing for our sing inspiration. We've done that. This will be the fourth or fifth year in a row. And it's always been a great hit. And uh, as we celebrate the holidays, and Jesus is the reason. Amen. Let's read together. Exodus chapter 20, verse 15. Say it with me. Thou shalt not steal. Now, Father, thank you for your commandments, and thank you for your word tonight. They are spiritual food, spiritual manna. Thank you for social renewal and spiritual revival. Thank you, Father, for speaking to us a now word through the words you gave back then that you're giving now. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. And turn around and tell somebody uh, you're glad to see them tonight and you may be seated. <laughs> I came across just to start tonight, I came across this humorous uh, that I thought was very humorous about uh, a criminal. Uh, these are actually documented cases, and I found it on a website, and it said, Dumb Criminal Acts. And these are true stories of things that cr criminals did that didn't turn out so good. One of the stories I read was about a man from the town of Grand Forks, North Dakota. He decided to travel to Fargo so that he could rob the first community bank. He quickly scribbled a note demanding money and gave it to the teller. Frightened, she gave the man what he asked for and watched him run out the door. Police were called upon reviewing the ransom note. It was noted that the message had been written on his own bank deposit slip. So they went to his house and arrested him. He was actually on the front porch. And then I read about a man who, who burst through the doors of a building. He yelled, this is a holdup. And though he had meant to rob the post office next door, he actually, by mistake, went into a sub-police station. And then my favorite, my favorite, was about a would-be robber who, was, who entered the bank and he tripped on the step 
causing his mask to fall off. His foot caught under the doormat, causing him to slide across the floor to the counter. He slid. And staggering to his feet, confused, he waved the fake gun and said, this is a stuff up. <laughs> well, when it comes to all that God has done for us, when it comes to all that God has given us, when it comes to all that God has available to us, stealing really is dumb. Amen. And I know what you're thinking tonight. I know what you're thinking. You're Pentecostals. I'm Pentecostal through and through. I was I was in another denomination, became Pentecostal. Uh, I was Pentecostal daddy's side, Pentecostal's mom's side, Pentecostal on their mom and dad's side, and on both sides. Pentecost all the way through, and should the Lord give me, uh, and he has given me spiritual children, biological children, not biological children at this point, but but uh, adopted children. <laughs> Praise God, they're going to be Pentecostal. And if I have grandchildren, they're going to be Pentecostal grandchildren. Amen. Hallelujah. But, uh, but I know what you're thinking as Pentecostals that, you know, thou shalt not steal. I mean, that's not a really red hot sermon. But I want to give you three aspects to this commandment that I think will speak to all of us tonight. And his commandments are good. Amen. And he is the source of all things. Amen. And really, the first aspect to stealing is, in fact, stealing from others. Point number one, aspect number one, stealing from others. And there is the practice of stealing. There's the, they're stealing in the form of robbery. This is the blatant form of stealing through breaking and entering, holding someone up at gunpoint. There's not only the stealing that involves robbery, there's fraud or embezzlement. Uh, this is the subtle form of stealing. This isn't the person bursting in and with a gun. This is a person who's helping themselves to the teal and, uh, and stashing away and, and reorganizing paperwork or identity theft, social security numbers, chip card readers. Uh, and then there is another form of stealing that I'm just going to uh, boldly uh, confess to you tonight is a form of stealing, which you don't hear a lot from, but we holiness churches should preach this, and we believe that gambling is a form of stealing. Now, I'm not against any recreational fun. I'm not saying it's not uh, to have a good time with, with somebody and just kind of shoot the breeze and just relax, and, and uh, you may play a, an innocent uh, game, but I'm talking about true gambling, that it's your goal to gamble, take your money and put it in the pot and hoping to win more money. And people say, well, what's wrong with gambling? Gambling is morally wrong because no one can win at gambling without someone else losing. Did you understand that? No one can win at gambling without another person losing. And here's what's wrong with gambling. When you win, it is profit and pleasure at the expense of someone else's pain and loss. And we are to love our brothers, and we are to be our brother's keeper. And it violates the spirit of concern and love when I take from someone a loss that is a gain to me. You see, it is trying to get into your control. It's trying to get into your grasp what belongs to someone else, listen, without duly working for it. Now, some people try to justify gambling by saying, well, what's the difference between that and the stock market? Well, the stock market is a risk, not a gamble. There's two different, two different things there. Because when you invest money in a business and stocks, you're simply trying to give something in order to get something. You're making something better, and as it gets better, it comes back to you. That is not gambling. But no one can win at gambling, and somebody needs to preach some old-fashioned holiness preaching once again and stand in line at trademark to, uh, 15 minutes. Uh, we are the, Remember, the Scripture says, Thou shalt not steal, and I don't care if it's for an education. Let me give you an education tonight. You give unto God, and He will give unto you. Bless, shaking down, running over, and he is my source uh, and not some television show, not Las Vegas, not the, not the uh, cards, uh, not playing cards. I don't want a casino in Nash County, my home county. I don't want a casino in America. I don't like to see the, the, the different things on TV that they're trying to do to get money from poor people. Uh, and people say, well, what's wrong with it? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. God said, thou shall not steal. Well, that's how you feel. No, that's how God feels. I thought that would be a good Pentecostal holiness amen right there. 
And one of the worst things it ever said in the scripture is that they gambled for his garments uh, right there at the foot of the cross. Uh, so please understand there's the practice of stealing, robbery, fraud, embezzlement, gambling, and then there's the principle of stealing. Now this is not outright theft, but it's the principle of it. For example, stealing on the job. Look at Ephesians chapter 6, verses 5 through 8. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5, Servants, be obedient to them that you are masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and singleness of heart, as unto who? Christ. Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With goodwill doing service as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that whatsoever good thing a man doeth, the same shall receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And America needs to re be uh, re reminded of good work ethics and good work habits. And for you to take a 30 minute break uh, and not clock out, you're stealing time from your employer. When you're slacking off, when you should be being productive uh, and you're not being productive, that is a soft form of stealing. And the scripture tells us that really we're not working for the boss in the uh, direct sense. We're working for God in the direct sense. And let everything be done as unto the Lord. And I believe a lot of, uh, a lot of the uh, places where we go in businesses, and one of the reasons there's failure in businesses, uh, it's not because of China so much. That is the issue in trade. And it's not so much because of the terrorists, uh, and that's a problem. But I'll tell you some of the decline in businesses is just good old lack of, of good business sense and good hard work ethic uh, and Lord uh, is the Lord is honored uh, and I tell you people think it's just the preacher in the pulpit but it's the clerk in the shop that God will be there and he is there amen uh, wherever you live wherever you work uh, do it as unto the Lord uh, and give him the glory can you say amen they're stealing in the home. What do you mean by that? 1 Corinthians 7, 3 through 5 says, Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. Likewise, the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. The likewise, the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Look at verse 5. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time, that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. And I'm just going to quickly go through this. Uh, but it basically says that we can rob our, our, in our, our marriage partner and we should give to our marriage partner that which is due. And that's for another sermon and another counseling session for another day. But let's look at the broader context. Uh, when you are in your home, you have obligation to your spouse. You have obligation to your children. When you're in a family, you have obligations to your family. And you're not to rob your family time and just be it all about you. I'm just going to play golf all weekend and I'm going to run up here to the mountains for three weeks, and you got grandkids that don't see you, and you got family that doesn't see you. We're not to rob from our families. We're to give to them. It is in order to visit your family and be with them on occasions, uh, like, like some that say, Pastor, I'm going to be away because I really need it. My wife will be with her mother next weekend because it's her birthday. She's 85 years of age. We don't have many more birthdays left. We miss her when she's not here, but it's in order, amen, to not rob from your family and, and at those precious times uh, and I sure really wish I had got a few more amens in this <laughs> thou shalt not rob the preacher of an amen <laughs> when he's preaching good old holiness preaching and you'd be amazed at, at families that will stick their mom in the rest home and didn't forget about them and, and complain that the nursing home's not looking after them. Uh, you need to look after mom when she's there and when she's not able to help herself. Uh, we, we talk about thou shalt not steal. Uh, are you stealing from your responsibility to your family? And your honor, this goes back to honor your mother and father. So let's not, listen, we can steal in the, in the job, we can steal in the home, and then we can steal by neglecting to do good things. What do you mean? Luke chapter 10 and verse 30 says, and let me, before I move on to this one, if you are married, please understand that you, your wife and your spouse, you're not to rob from them love, attention, time. You're to give them the very best that you can in the up season and the down seasons. Can you say amen tonight? Yeah. You sitting by your wife, you better say amen. <laughs> Luke chapter 10 and Luke chapter 10 and verse 30 
And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest, and when he saw him, he passed to the other side. And likewise, a Levite, he was at the place, came and looked and passed by. That's a th form of stealing. When you neglect to help when you can help. I'm not saying you can help all the time. I'm not saying you can help everything. But you can do what you can do. And the book of Proverbs tells us, chapter 3 and verse 27, it says, withhold not good from them to whom it is due. When it is in your power of thy hand to do it. Now, I'm not going to give money to every person to ask money because sometimes they're going to take the money and hurt themselves. Amen. And you have to be careful about that. And don't let it pull your heartstrings. And don't let the devil just tell you how bad you are because you don't give to somebody on the street that's, that's uh, in, a, in, a, in a bad situation. But you can in discernment and through prayer. And if God moves upon you and you have it, to, you should, and we as Christians should be known for giving to those in need, those who are wounded, those who have been stripped by the devil, uh, those who've been neglected, uh, those who sometimes people just need you to slow down and listen. Amen. One of the greatest gifts I have given over the years as a pastor is just to listen. Amen. Let them pour their hearts out, not try to answer every question or every problem they have. You know, as a pastor, I have I have the answers. Amen. <laughs> but I have to sometimes just give a listening ear, and when the time comes, give them one little nugget of truth uh, and. I'll tell you right now, we should give time, and, and we, should, we should bear one another's burdens, amen, and we should be, co I'm concerned about your mothers in the hospital. People say, well, we, our pastor should do that. We all should care for one another. We should not rob from each other encouragement uh, and strength. Uh, we're all going through the battles together. We're not made it to heaven yet. Uh, lest thou shalt not steal when it comes to brotherly love uh, and commitment to one another. Give the Lord a hand of praise here tonight. Don't you withhold good. <laughs> To whom it is due. So there's not only, number one, the aspect of stealing from others. There is also aspect, an aspect of stealing from God. Well, you say, can a man rob God? Well, the Scripture asked that question. And I'm going to get to that in a moment. But when we don't honor God with our time, we're in a sense robbing God. Now that goes back to that fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. But really, every day is holy unto the Lord. Amen? And every day we should have our time with Jesus. And I want you to understand something, that when we don't give our time to the Lord, just like if we don't give our time to our spouse or time to our children or grandchildren or our family, we are in a sense robbing them of that relationship. And we should honor God with the tick-tock of the clock. And we should be mindful uh, and teach us, the Scripture says in Psalms 90, to number our days. And the time is fleeting. And you can't put off, well, I'll get to prayer later or I'll read my Bible later. We've got to, we've got to give uh, unto the Lord uh, the time that is due to Him. And I'm not quite ready for that Scripture yet. But we we don't honor, we steal from God when we don't honor Him with our time. We fill our time with all kinds of entertainment, all kinds of activities, uh, all kinds of pursuits. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with activities, there's nothing wrong with pursuits. Uh, but remember to give God time every day. If not, you're stealing. And then, when we don't honor God with our, with our talent, our talent. Well, I'm not talented. Well, you've got a gift. And you know that Matthew chapter 25 is the parable of the talents. It was actually money. Those talents were talents of gold. But the principle is there. He gave to some one talent. He gave to some uh, two talents. He gave to another five talents. And you know that parable, how that the one with five doubled it to ten. The one with two doubled it to four. The one with one did what? He buried his talent. Now, that is a parable on finances. However, the principle of the giftings and talents that God has given you, and if you hide that talent, if you refuse to use that talent, folks, the church needs you to rise up to 
to your spiritual giftings. Uh, the church is never before. We've got terrorism. Uh, we've got a woke mob out there taking the streets, and here we are fastening on the pews. I want you to understand something. Uh, you are gifted by God. Uh, you. This is the body of Christ. It's not a one-man show. Uh, we are better together. Uh, there's a foot. There's an arm. There's a thumb. There's an eye. Every part. There's no big eyes or little U's. Uh, in God's kingdom, he's all. And if you have, you have, you preacher, I, you know, I'm so, you quit trying to be falsely humble. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're taking God's glory that he wants to produce through you. Uh, and false humility is not going to be honoring God. And you'll be given account thereof uh, when God looks at you and said, I gave you the talent to counsel. I gave you the talent to help. Uh, I gave you giftings and, and, and you didn't use them. Uh, and it's called stealing. Uh, and so whatever gifts and talents you have, uh, use them for the Lord and for his glory. Like the drummer that I had one time that I didn't know he could drum, and I needed a drummer, and found out, went to his house to visit him, had a drum set in there. He played the drums. You know, some people say they can play the drums, but they can't. That's why I don't let tambourines go on in the church. I'm an equal opportunity disappointer. Nobody plays the tambourine. Well, I'm a gifted to play it. I'm anointed to play it. That's good. Then let's come on to the praise team and come 9.30 on Sunday and let's practice. Amen. <laughs> Just don't walk in that door and start hitting a tambourine because I will ask you not to do it. I'll do it so nicely. And then if it doesn't work, I'll say, Pastor Jerry said not to do it. Because <laughs> I'm the associate pastor and I am in trouble tonight. Amen. <laughs> no, I won't do that. I'll never, I'll never do that, Pastor. But the point is that uh, that he had a drum set and he could play. I said, "Brother, what's the hold up?" And he started telling me. I went to such such church, and they got upset with me, and they said some things to me about X, Y, Z, and I just um, refused to never again do anything for the church. My friend, that is stealing. And I'll tell you, when you have that attitude, you'll never have joy. Joy comes in serving, which tells me if you're grumpy all the time, and every time you come to church, it's either too hot or too cold, or every time you come to church, it's preacher preaches too long or too short, and that grumpy spirit probably get down to the root of it. There's something you need to be doing for the Lord. And this is the flip side, too. If you do have a talent for God, make sure you're humble about it. <laughs> Not falsely humble and hide it, but don't be overly humble and abuse it. Amen? And there are people that come in, buddy, and they got their chest pulled back, and they, they say, just make way. I can do this. I can preach. I can sing. But can you clean the bathrooms? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes I just need you to take somebody home, amen, uh, on the other side of town. F friend, uh, let's honor God with our talents, and, and let's not, if God has gifted you greatly with the preaching ability, then let it go to Jesus, uh, because tomorrow you could have an accident and not be able to speak. Uh, and if you've got a great singing talent, don't go get upset because you don't be asked to sing when you feel like you should sing. Understand, you can get in the shower and sing unto the Lord, amen, uh, a new song, praise God. Be humble. Humble one, grateful, uh, but whatever you do, don't steal the glory. If God uses your talent, uh, don't steal glory that goes to him. He gets, yes, we honor singers. We honor great talented people, gifted businessmen, gifted evangelists. Uh, we honor them. The Bible does say that, to honor them. But all the glory goes to God. Uh, we're not going to rob him of his glory. Somebody say Amen. Oh, heavenly. And then we should not steal from God not only our time, our talent, but we should not rob from God our testimony. You see, if we don't give God glory for the things he's done, we're stealing. We're stealing glory that belongs to God. Did you know murmuring is a form of glorifying Satan? You're praising the devil when you murmur and complain. Now we're ready for that scripture. Psalms 29 and 2. It says, give unto the Lord. Somebody say give. He's not going to force it from you. But give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord. 
in the beauty of holiness. Can we do that right now? Father, we just give you glory with our testimony. It's testimony time. You put me on my two feet. I got clothes in my closet. Praise God, I live in America, not Afghanistan. Oh, thank you, Lord, I've got hot and cold running water. Thank you for my home. And, Lord, I want to give you glory. It's not my talent. It's what you've given me. The glory belongs to you. Thank you for healing me when I was in the hospital. Thank you for raising me up when everybody thought I was down. Come on and give the Lord a hand of praise. Oh, clap your hands. All you people, shout unto the Lord with the voice of truth. Try up. We, we, could, we could steal from God time, talent, testimony, and here it is. We can steal from God tithe. Malachi 3 and 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but we're in through tithes and offerings. And that preaches itself. So there's number one, stealing from others. Say amen. There's number two, stealing from God, say amen. And the third aspect brings it all together is really we're stealing from our own self. People say, well, thou shalt not steal. God doesn't want us to steal. Because really what you're doing is you're robbing your own self. You're robbing your own self. Look at Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 25. It says, your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withheld good things from you. Amen. Look at the effects of drugs and alcohol. Look at the effects of being not thankful or grumbling. A person has a bad disposition, usually has higher blood pressure. <laughs> You're really robbing from yourself when you don't give God the glory. That's when you hide your talent, you are one day going to weep tears for what could have been. Uh, and we are to understand that, that, uh, that sin withholds good things from us. And so, by the way, what is the opposite of stealing. Anybody want to give me one word? What's the opposite of stealing? Giving. Look at Ephesians chapter 4 and 28. It says, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may give to him that needeth. Let me tell you, give is the opposite of stealing. Uh, give your employer the due. Uh, give others help if you see them wounded on the road to Jericho. Hallelujah. Give God what belongs to him. Give him your time. Uh, give your, uh, render to your wife honor and, and all that comes with that in marriage. And Render to your children uh, time. Don't be so busy. Uh, render to church uh, the things that are to churches and, and service and volunteering and stepping up. And, and I'm here. I'm with you, Pastor. Pastor, praise God. When render to God your treasure. Uh, don't you hold back tithe because you don't like the good old holiness preaching of the preacher. And you've heard that before. Well, until things change, I'll, I'll hold back my tithe. Well, you might die before things change. And then what? Can I get a witness out there here tonight? And I don't want to stand before God with a, having stolen anything that belongs to him. Uh, praise God, somebody. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Uh, praise him here, all creatures here below. Praise him above you, heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Give him glory and honor in this house tonight. And Luke chapter 6 and verse 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. That's Westmoreland Church right there. And shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you need, it's going to be measured back to you again. Somebody say amen. It's three aspects to stealing. Stealing from others, stealing from God, stealing from self. And so just to make it all simple as a close, here's the main thing. Here's the main point. I preached 30 minutes to get to the main point. Thou shalt not steal really means this. Give God everything. Give him every hurt. Uh, you said, preacher, you don't know what it's like to be hurt. Are you kidding me? My daddy died when he was 60. He died. We buried him on October the 10th, 2005. I didn't know that in Wilson that on November 2nd, 2005, a little girl would be born. And I often think about how when I was grieving for my dad, God had a little girl that was going to be a blessing to me and Darnell. We never understand how God works. 
But even in the grave, I praise the Lord. I praise God I was able to lead my daddy to Jesus before, before he died. Amen. And I was relentless. I constantly talked to him about the Lord. I used every opportunity to pivot conversation. Holidays are coming up, folks. They're coming to your house, Thanksgiving. They're going to be on their phones. They're going to be with their headphones. Listen, find a way to break into that and tell them about Jesus. Amen. Ask them questions. Talk, bring up death. <laughs> We're going to bring up death? Yes. Because it's appointed the man wants to die. And we just buried a 19-year-old uh, uh, the other day, right? Amen. We don't know when that time is coming. Br bring it up in a, in a way that make people think about it. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead. That. I'm going to touch that next week on being a, being a witness. Folks, uh, God wants to use you. He wants you to be a soul winner. He wants you. Give God everything. Give him your money, your talent, your time. In fact, I'll close with this. There was a little boy. He made a sailboat, a little toy sailboat. He fashioned it out of wood. He carved it. He painted it red. He was very proud of it, um, uh, and it was his workmanship, his craftsmanship, very talented. He took it down the stream to sail it. He was guiding it with a stick. This was before the days of electronics. And a puff of wind blew it from... Uh, where he was, and it sailed across and down the stream across the body of water out of reach, and finally, to his horror, his little precious sailboat vanished out of sight. He was heartbroken, dejected. Several days later, however, he was passing a second-hand store, and he looked in the window, and there was that boat, his own boat. Someone obviously had fetched it from the water, and he went into the store and demanded. And you know, the owner of the store said, well, wait a minute, son, I can't give this to you. I purchased it from the person who, who sold it to me. It's for sale if you want it. You may purchase it. And the boy was like, it's mine. I made it. He said, I don't care. I bought it. And if you want it, you got to buy it back. And the little fellow said, well, how much is it? The man told him. And the youngster, bless his heart, he went and worked and earned money, and he came back to that store, put the money on the counter, and said, let me have my boat. And, of course, the man gave it to him. And the little boy took the boat that was the work of his own hands. He made it. He walked out of the store just caressing it, talking to it. And this is what he said. Somebody heard him say, he said, little boat, you're mine. You are twice mine. You are mine because I made you. <laughs> And you're mine because I bought you back. Now, dear friend, God can say to every one of us, you are mine. You are mine. You're not your own. You are mine because I created you. And you're mine because I redeemed you. And I bought you back. And don't steal from God. Don't defraud God. Don't refuse to serve God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, because it all belongs to him. Can you stand with me tonight? Can we just render to God praise tonight? You are worthy, O Lord. You are worthy, Father. If you don't know the Lord as your Savior tonight, he's calling out to you. And you may be like that little boat. You may be lost and adrift. And whoever purchased you may be treating you bad. But the Lord Jesus has bought you twice. He made you and he bought you. And he's reaching out to knocking on the door of your heart. Will you not open the door and let the Savior come in? Thou shalt not steal. Don't rob from God all of the life that he wants for you and all of the eternal life he has planned for you. Pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me of breaking these Ten Commandments. Forgive me of sin. And I open the door of my heart, and I recognize what a price you paid. And by grace through faith, I repent of my, I repent of my sin. I turn to you, and I will not rob you any longer of my breath and of my life. And by grace through faith in your word, I know I'm saved. Are you saved tonight? I, I said, are you saved tonight? Now, I want the Lord to speak to you. 
I hope I've preached in a way that, that, that touched everybody's heart. I've examined my heart today, and uh, I want to um, ask the Lord, Father, am I stealing witness from you? Am I stealing anything from you? Time. So can we make that a prayer tonight? Can we find a place in this altar tonight to say, Lord, help me not to rob God of the time. You've got talents. You've got abilities. And you may not feel worthy, but don't rob the Lord tonight. And if you don't can't think of anything, then just come and give him praise tonight. You deserve the glory. Everyone come. And the honor. Your commandments are good, Lord. We lift our hands. God has good things for you. Oh, today is a new day. You deserve the glory. Oh, and the honor. We lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. Oh, you are. I surrender. You merit. Oh, so great. I give it all to you, Lord. Give him the hurt. Give him the talent. No one else like you. Come on, you deserve, and you deserve the glory and the honor. Oh, Lord, we lift our hands in worship. Your holy name, you deserve the glory. I'm going to give it to you, Father. And the, I'm not going to rob you, Lord. Oh, we lift our hands in worship. Come on. As we lift your hope. Give him praise. And you are great. You do merit. Oh, so. I tell you, some miracles are going to happen. Oh, we give to you, Lord. There is no one else like you for you are great you do me oh so great there is no one else like you give him the hurt there is no one else like 